Okay, welcome back to Ed's Trains. Um, this will be a little different video. Uh, I'm going to talk about how I've organized the manuals and uh, what led me to it and, and uh, a couple of shortcuts uh, that I've come up with. And ho hopefully uh, it'll give you some ideas. Um, I'm sure many of you out there have better ways of doing it than I'm doing it. But, uh, I thought for uh, instructional purposes uh, this might be useful. Uh, I have quite a few trains and uh, accessories and um, I also have the LCS uh, command system as well as uh, uh, DCS um, and I used to have my manuals just stacked up in a drawer, four drawers, and when I needed to have access to something uh, I would have to go through the stack so uh, and on top of that I've got uh, Vision Line, I have Legacy, uh, TMCC, DCS, and then I have Accessories, and it just became unmanageable. And uh, actually, serendipitously, I came across uh, these plastic sleeves that fit the manuals almost perfectly. The, on occasion, there's a manual that's a little bit larger, and I just use a uh, a sheet cutter and take about an eighth of an inch off and, and it all fits really well. Now you can't leaf through them but they're very nicely uh, held and they slip into these three ring binders that you see over here and uh, I've experimented on uh, the number of binders or the size of the binders to use and I've, I have as small as one inch and as large as two and a half inches. And it kind of depends on where you are and the number of manuals that you have to a particular topic. So, um, I've got these manuals and then I divided them by Vision Line and Legacy and TMCC. And uh, as I said, they, they slip in very easily. So this is my latest uh, manual. It's the uh, Vision Line. Uh, 21010 2. Uh, you'll see it covered a couple of places uh, in uh, my videos. Uh, and it slides in just like that. And then I'll stick it in the Vision Line manual. And what I've done is uh, I've just grouped them uh, right now, it's just the latest one to come in. And uh, this has not only the engines, but also uh, the diner cars and other cars that are Vision Line cars. And uh, it turns out to be really handy. Now, I've done that for all of them. And uh, it took a little time to steal a logo and kind of label them. And I have, as you saw in the picture, I've got them stacked up on the rack. Uh, right next to where I, I'm normally standing when I run my engines. Um, and then in addition to the Line L, Vision Line, Legacy, TMCC, and the conventional engines, I also have the manual for the TMCC, or uh, excuse me, the uh, DCS manuals. And then uh, I have a manual that's uh, dedicated to the power control uh, of, the, uh, of the layout. And so what I've done is I've put in the uh, transformers. I have the CWL, CW80, and I have a couple of CWs. Uh, and then I have the LCS uh, modules listed, as well as various fast track that are kind of unique. They're not just uh, you know, a 10 inch or a 30 inch piece of track, but the switches and that sort of thing. Uh, the IR, uh, 153 IR controllers. Etc. So that if I've got a problem or a question or I need to reprogram it, can't remember how to do it, it's very easy to go in, pull it out, and uh, uh, and then you know read up on whatever it is you need to read up on. Um, so so I have a power control manual, and then I have one that's dedicated to uh, accessories. Um, I haven't listed them yet, but I think I'm going to go back in and uh, not only list them but uh, list them in the way they'll be organized in the manual. Now, uh, after having done all of that, which is really wonderful, 
I notice there are certain things that happen or I need access to and I'd rather not have to go through the whole manual. Like if I haven't used an engine for a long time and it's got multiple um, smoke uh, units, uh, I always want to find out do I put it in both smokestacks, in one smokestack, do I put it in... So anyway, I'll, I'll uh, pull out a sheet as I have here that I call the operating cheat sheet. So I've gone in through the manuals and found what's kind of unique to a particular engine and then just pulled out, the, copied the pages, pulled them out and put them in here. So for instance, the hot box reefer, I think I've run that once just to test it when it came in, uh, maybe one other time and I haven't used it since, but I'd like to put it on uh, the, the layout the next time that I'm uh, running it with a uh, yeah, particular with my grandson. So, uh, I've gone through, the Acel is another one, I probably run that train maybe once or twice a year. So, uh, I've gone through the manuals and pulled out the uh, command instructions or anything that's kind of unique about a particular engine and uh, laid it in this uh, operating cheat sheets manual, so it's all real handy. Um, there's a plug, uh, this is not the original protective sheets that I found, but uh, it's a pretty good deal on Amazon. Uh, you get a hundred of them, which will probably last me the rest of my life. And uh, uh, what I noticed though is that uh, some of the sizes of these uh, binders are not available, or if they are available, they're in packets of four or six, and that's not really what I need anymore. Uh, but I did find Avery economy uh, binder that's a, I think it's a one inch binder. Uh, the ones I really like are these here, uh, Quick Fit Deluxe, um, I believe this is an inch and a half. And yes, it is an inch and a half. Uh, and I found that to be a real comfortable size. Uh, okay, so that's that. Now one other thing that I've done, uh, and I'm sure you have too, probably most people have, uh, I have a sheet of because the ID numbers are really uh, critical to, as you know, to, to running the system, uh, addressing the engines and accessories and all. Uh, I put together this, this sheet again. Uh, it's lined them all up so that when I get a new engine in, um, I, I try to use two of the numbers that are in the road number. Uh, sometimes I can't. Uh, and where I've kind of run out of numbers or uh, I need to program two uh, engines against the same number, uh, I'll know what's going on by looking at the sheet. I've divided it up, have one that's kind of comprehensive in a diesel and locomotives, uh, steam, electric, uh, and then the uh, accessory cars that require, uh, that are accessible by legacy, so they need their own ID number. And uh, I found that to be uh, useful in making sure I didn't have conflicts and I knew what I was when I wanted to run a particular accessory, I could confirm that I had the right ID number. So that's kind of how we get organized. I hope you find it useful and helpful. If you have any questions, just put them in the uh, comment section below. And thanks for watching.